Hello, Jake. Hello. So this is it. This is it. The this RS is... Venture. Absolutely. So do you want to tell us why we're why we're we going sailing in this and what it's all about? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So essentially, this is the RS Venture. Uh, it's been built by RS Sailing, but out for a while now. But um, we wanted to showcase it a bit more as a dinghy cruising boat for families, for couples, for single-handers, for whatever. People keep asking me, what dinghy should I buy? And of course, I, I sail a Elure, which no one's ever heard of, really. Um, and there are mainstream manufacturers who produce dinghies that surely must be suitable for dinghy cruising. So I thought I should go sailing in one of them. So when Jake said, come along, try out the RS Venture, I thought, yeah. Essentially, we're going sailing with Roger on a little day sail um, to show him the boat and see what he thinks. And it's November. It's a cold November's day on the south coast of England. So it's a proper test. Let's leave the past behind Walk with me There's something else we need to find Say you'll go, don't make me wait There's no need to Are you alright to launch this on your own? Uh, do you want some help? But we could just put this mainsail up now and then just throw it in. Okay. RS really uh, you think of as a as a racing boat manufacturer. But you know the venture, which they do in various versions, including with, with weighted keels, sounds just the thing for, for dinghy cruising. Instead of a kicking strap, the boat has a ganav, a word I'd never come across before. That looks like a lot of sail for today. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a bit of wind. Let's start with it. We'll be all... <laughs> going down, we'll be all right. We were intending to do this boat test on Windermere the week before, but the whole lake was flooded. And so we moved the event to Chichester Harbour. It's only welly depth that's troubling me. Yes, that's always the trouble. So despite the rather unpromising day, we were hoping that at least this was going to be a test of the boat as a cruising dinghy. And the wind's coming from That's over it. there, Correct, yeah, yeah. so we can go that way. Oh yeah, yeah. So why Getting don't we back. do that? Yeah, yeah. So we might meet the others. Okay. There we are, we might meet the others. Oh, oh go downwind then. There we go, we go downwind. So we just have to beat back, but with the tide, oh gosh, look, it's all sporty again. Ooh, look at this! <laughs> ah, we're not used to this, we Elure sailors, all this sudden acceleration. <laughs> well, we can also, we can reef. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should reef? Yeah, well, I suppose it's a big open space, isn't it? People racing over there. Can you see them? All the specks in the distance. There we are. Yeah, well, it'd be, ni it'd be nice to see it reef. Yeah, go on. It, it is it is a good place to do it, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, we'll see, if if, I, if you help, 
I'll just helm. hold this line too. Okay. And you can film me doing it. I'll helm and I'll film. Yeah, with one. I'll helm with one hand and hold the yeah. camera with the other. There you are. Okay. Uh, go on, you just helm, he says. It's extraordinary, so I didn't even film the other end of the sail. Yeah. Well, we can always shake it out and yeah. well, put it back in later. Look at that, single line reefing. Oh, yeah. That was extraordinarily fast. See, I was still thinking, oh, he's getting ready to do it, and you've <laughs> done it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say that it takes a little bit more rigging up before you go. Yeah. But actually, once your uh, once you've got it rigged and you're sailing, I mean, it's... Uh... Well, we're here, Roger. We are here, yes. We've just started heading down Itchener Channel with East Ed behind us. So I've got some racers going on, some XODs from Itchener Sailing Club they'll be, and some uh, International 14s. You can see here the typical form of a modern dinghy, a very fine bow and then very wide stern quarters that provide an awful lot of form stability to the hull. Small dinghy cruisers there. Yeah. Well, I've never been down here, this is uh, exciting times. It's really pretty well sat water now, isn't it? We're not racing along at the same manic speed we were doing. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Here it comes. This is ready. <laughs> not having sailed a modern dinghy for quite a long time, I had to relearn how to use the tiller extension. There's no rules, dinghy cruising. It's probably wrong. There was a dinghy cruising association rally on Chichester Harbour this very day, so we kept a keen eye out for other boats, but we were not setting off from the same place as the others, very unlikely to catch them up. And then suddenly... Anyone? No! Where are they all? We've seen you! I think they're up there. No, well we thought that, we've been up there. And oh, they must be up there. Resigning ourselves to not finding the others, we decided to eat some biscuits instead. A fairly normal dinghy cruising association rally then. So I've given up steering now, it's Jake's job. So, he's going to show me how it's done. I should have got him to steer at the beginning and then I could have copied him really. I've got to remember, you see, how to use tiller extensions and booms. Nearly, nearly took someone's head off on an adjoining boat. Sweet. I forgot how to boom. Yeah, tell us to do that. Yeah, there we are. Here we go. Yeah, let's have a look how he does it. I suppose I have to change sides as well. Oh. There we are. It's this, it's this little manoeuvre here that... Oh, look at that. Yeah, let's see. Oh, and he passed, the, he passed the tiller behind his back. You see, I don't know how to do that. So when I when I started learning, I'd sail with boats like uh, Bosun's and Old Wayfarers where you had the main sheet coming from the back and you you trap it with your thumb. And I remember a very um, trying experience when I had to learn on a more modern boat uh, with this centre main technique and yeah. it took me forever to get it. I hated it. I, 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 
just because I couldn't do it really. But, uh, well, it's the short tiller and then very long extension. Yes. Yeah, I don't think I've ever sailed a boat configured like that. But yeah, yeah that's. Mean, the other thing is, you know, really, we come really. Yeah, you, yeah, we should be much right further up. forward. Yeah. And then all this, it does get out of the way a little bit. Yeah. But, um, it's, uh, you know, it's, I'm, yeah. I, I feel comfortable like this, so that's how I say it. I'm not, I'm not going to be steering in this, it's far too, <laughs> it's far too expert. The typical way you lower sail in a modern dinghy is to pull the sail out of the track on the back of the mast and into the bottom of the boat which Jake is doing here. These are solo single-handed dinghies going off racing. Like a lot of modern dinghies, the RS Venture is carried on a combi trailer, which is a combination of a launching trolley and road trailer. So you uh, launch the boat simply with the launching trolley. Woo! <laughs> Thank you very much, Jake. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> I was unable to do a full review of the boat in view of the conditions so this video is really more of an impression of this dinghy and I would hope that we can meet up again and have a longer sail. This is what sailing clubs are for. Jake, would you like to tell us a little bit about the RS Venture and how it was conceived? It's, it's not part of the racing family. It's a little bit more relaxed. It's a little bit more easy going. Um, so it's definitely a cruising boat. And it, the thing I like about it, which is in the design somewhere, I mean, I didn't design it, but I like about it is it's quite long. You know, it carries its weight very nicely and in lighter winds when everyone else might be struggling, your boat is still just, just cruising along. From that, uh, they then brought out, as you mentioned earlier, some other boats, uh, some other sort of um, specifications. So now other there's versions. A, yeah, so there's yeah. a weighted centre plate. Um, and then after that, they brought out a, a, a drop, a vertical keel, which um, now, so if you're um, looking for something slightly more offshore or adventurous, you've got that option as well. So, so. could you buy the standard design with the fibreglass? centerboard and then say oh no I want a metal center plate or do you have to sort of decide uh, ultimately the best way to do it is to decide yeah um, so if you want the keel that is slightly different so you wouldn't be able this to is sort the, of with the, the lead bulk that's it. the ballast the vertical keel. dropping yeah. so it is lifting but it drops yeah. vertically with the mold yeah. you would need to decide that beforehand if you wanted to change it to a center plate from a center board I think you could do that but to be honest, I have to double check. So, so where are RS boats built? Are they are they British or do, are they imported from China? Or ah, they're or not imported from China. Everything in the modern world. No. So we we pride ourselves on being a British company, um, and the boats are built in the UK. So we've got a couple of different spots around the country. Uh, there's one in Cumbria, one in Boston. Um, we have a big uh, rotor molded factory. The plastic boats are built in Newark. Um, mm. uh, where else? But anyway, there's the Ventures few... fiberglass though, rather. And the Venture is fiberglass, yeah. and it's certainly built to be a robust boat. Like mm. I said, it's not part of the the racing, you know, high end. It's got a lot of material to make it robust, so that if you do put it on a beach, it's mm. not going to crumble into two pieces, or you know, you, you do bump it into something because you know we're all learning at some oh, point you're, in our you're careers. Bump it into something. Yeah, now, it's always the way. But you know, so it is relatively robust for a five yeah. plus boat. It's uh, it's designed to be there for families. It's very easy to sit in and sail, and you know, be comfortable mm. um, with a you know high boom. I don't think that worried either of us today. Um, no, no. It's with the reefing mainsail, yeah. is that standard or is that something you had? Yeah. Done? No, 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 no. That's so that's standard. That's thing. standard for yeah. all the boats. Um, so they all come with. Reefing. They all come. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So all the sails. Uh, have a roller reef on the jib and then they've got reefing points in them 
and uh, you had the one line reefing system. So yeah. once you've got it threaded through, um, which you saw me do quite quickly earlier, mm -hmm. set it up, it's there, yeah. ready to go. Let the halyard down, pull the reefing line, and it's in. And if you were so today, we had the smaller sail and we reefed did. it. Yeah. But so if we had the bigger sail, we could have reefed that too. Oh, absolutely. But they both yeah. have one reefing. Correct. Yeah. So you could have um, yes, an RS venture with two reefs, which really goes give you the flexibility. Yeah. And we sail very well without without a jib. Just we, all day. Yes. We just You're sail right. with one yeah. reef in the sail. That yeah. was pretty windy. It I was think. pretty windy. Yeah, it was that was pretty windy. <laughs> It was, it was, I mean, you know, it's not the sort of boat, it's not known as one of our wet boats, but we were both getting a little bit splashed towards the end, and that that gives you an idea that, um, you know, but, you know, we're both good sailors, and it was quite fun, I thought. It was I, fun. I, I, yeah, it was know. good. Um, yeah. so. Oh, that was the thing, yes, the, 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 because there was no way to put an outboard on. There is, we didn't There is have a it. way to put an outboard yes. on. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so very so you simply, could, you could, yeah. if you've got an outboard, um, you can just uh, buy the motor bracket, pop it on, and then you just bolt it to the boat. Very yeah. secure. At RS, we really like the e-propulsion, which is a new electric outboard, yeah. which would push the Venture along quite happily. Um, what it doesn't have at the moment is any sort of um, rollocks, rollocks for, for rowing, which I know that yeah. dinghy cruisers um, like get rollocks. very, very you proud fit, about. You could fit one on, and you yeah. could scull it. Scull it oh, yes, actually, you certainly you, could, yeah. I would think you could, you down the centre of the boat, you could stow normal length oars, yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah, you could yeah, add, actually either side of that console, yes, yeah. that's in fact what you do, you put them down on the, on the bottom of the boat, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you and, you, and they'd it. actually then, you'd, there'd be something to push your foot against as you, you move yeah. to sit out, yeah, yeah. that is what you and we were do. talking about that central piece as well, that actually that, that, there's a few spots in the boat that do allow people to totally customise and yeah. Um, yeah. You, you as we said you you'd have to arrange a rowing seat but none of this yeah. is is impossible no not at all we wait we no. wait for RS to address this well look if you want to put together a the, the Roger Barnes dinghy cruising spec we'll we'll we'll, we'll put it together so, okay so people can <laughs> add it to are. their basket and then it comes with all the bits that are. Roger Barnes yeah. thinks yes, that you need picture so. of me that's... that would be the thing to do it yeah. would actually be to say this is the cruising spec and you get yeah. yours yeah. yeah you get you get instructions and the and tent. Where to stow them you get a tent you know and maybe you get maybe an extra locker that fits in somewhere that yeah you... so there's lots of um variation that you can add and um there are bits and bobs that you can add to your boat and to customise it, whether it's a spinnaker or uh, a masthead. Flip. There's a lot of support that comes from RS. So you ultimately, you just ring us up and ask us a question. You know, and either you'll get through to the technical team and ask them about how something is made, or maybe it's a question about uh, I'm not sure how to tie my anchor on. Mm. You know, and you'll probably get they through. they give you an answer about how to tie your anchor. Well, if you want to know, if they got through to you, if they got through to me, I'd be able to help. But you know, whatever it is, yeah. ring us up, and then mm. there's you know, all online or all of our um, customer handbooks. Find it on your phone, flick to the right bit, and go right. Okay, here we go. It's the mast bottom mm. step mm. or whatever. Oh, I see. Yeah, just double check. Mm. And, you know, and that's always available to us in mm -hmm. this modern age. And you'll find right down to the nut, the bolt, the washer, the rivet, as small as we can possibly make it. And you can just, like internet shopping, just add to basket pay at the end. And uh, if there's a small thing, they'll actually just post it to you for free. So um, all the stock is held in the UK in our base in Southampton. Mm -hmm. So if, if things break, normally it's, you know, we do our best to kind of get you back sailing as soon as we possibly can. So what we need is someone who owns an RS Venture who actually puts a tent on it and yes tries it out for sleeping overnight. Yes. Don't we? Well, watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> could do another video about... Yeah, yeah that'd I be could, brilliant. Could bring the Alluro. We can go out for a night's camping somewhere. That'd be fantastic, yeah. Mm. But, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure, thanks for coming sailing. It was lovely, yes, thank yeah. you. It's great to have the opportunity.